let's start. Max crits. When my players roll an attack and they get a nat 20, they get max damage. No rolls. I want them to focus on narrating that attack. For monsters, I do static initiative and pre-roll initiative. What that means is uh, 10 plus dex, that's it. And I do most of them before the prep, the ones at least I know that they're gonna fight or could fight, probably might fight, more likely are going to fight. I use the one D&D exhaustion where every level of exhaustion is actually a subtraction from your D20 rolls and your spell DCs. Check out my exhaustion video if you want more details on that. I, as a DM, I do average damage for most of the attacks. I do roll the dice when the stakes are high. Either their HP are low or I'm rolling a buttload of die, like a lightning bolt or fireball. It's just easier for me so I can focus on narrating attacks. Something that D&D is doing more and more is every playable creature is 30 feet movement. And I don't like that. So I determine everyone's speed by their size. Tiny is 20 feet, small is 25, medium is 30. And then if you have like half giant traits, like big build or whatever, larger build, you get 35. Larges are like 40, huge is 50, gargantuan is 60. That's kind of my default. And then depending on the monster, I might change that up. Anyone using the hide action for an advantage on an attack gets a bonus 1d6 sneak attack damage, not just the rogue. I like the idea that hide and sneak attack are attached in some way. That does mean the rogue gets an extra 1d6. If you think these are interesting, hit the subscribe button so that way I can give you even more stupid, crazy ideas. Inspiration points on critical successes. You roll nat 20 on an attack, here's an inspiration point. Because you can only have one at a time, if I'm giving you your second, you can hand it off to another player and we can actually start using that to give to each other and really build up teamwork. It's not a mechanical rule, but it is a rule when I'm a DM. Players need to hold their questions until it's their turn. I can't just hop, scot just jump around every single turn. I need to be able to give every person my fullest attention. As a player, I often want to jump in with a question. And having this rule as a dungeon master has taught me as a player to like, ah, ah, I'll wait till my turn. And then when I have the dungeon master's full attention, asking him this question with the context of what I want to do, I get to use up that time more efficiently. This is a rule from 1D&D that I really like. It helped uh, narrow down the triggers for the help action. So to help another player with an ability check, you need to be proficient and you need to be within walking range. If you want to help somebody with an attack roll, you have to be within reach. Rather than having standing up cost half your movement, it costs 10 feet. Yes, it's technically half if you're tiny, <laughs> but it just makes more sense. For fall damage, I have no cap. So it can just keep going, keep going, keep going. Drinking your own potion is a bonus action. Feeding a potion to somebody else or handing it off is an action. I also have this, but none of my players have tried it yet. I have as a full action, you can drink your potion and get max healing from the potion. So that way, at least the bonus action is able to just pop down a, a potion if you need it. But if you are able to sacrifice a full action or if you think it's worth it, you get a lot more for your buck. Those are most of the combat house rules that I DM with. I have a few more that I'm finalizing and working on because of some stuff at my table. Every table's different. Let me know what you run with on your combats. What's something different that I didn't list here? Or what's something that's very unique to your table? Let me know.